Welcome back to Orlando Out of Context. This is episode 30 and I'm Brian. I'm Stephanie. Welcome back everyone. We've been gone for a few weeks. We've been I've been out of service. Stephanie has been sick. I guess it's been a mixture of things, but I think mainly we were going to record but then you were just not coughing up a storm and I'm still sick, but we're going to try this today. And I'm starting to get sick. But you took your little I took, we've, we just had hot toddies. And we just had hot toddies. And uh, we're going to try to make it through. We're going <laughs> to record two episodes at once. So we're going to try to make it through both of them. And my, my family was here uh, at the beginning of January. So we have some stuff to report on from that visit. And um, yeah, so let's get let's get started. And then I went to Susuru, which is something we'll talk about too. Um, well, let's go through the whole list. So you went to the Kennedy Space Center. Mm-hmm. Then we went to Worldly Dome for like your birthday party. Yeah. And then you went to the Brevard Zoo while your parents were here. Yes. And then um, I went to Susuru. I've been to Susuru twi- twice since. That's over by. It's over by. Player One. Player One okay. in the uh, on Palm Parkway. It's awesome. And then I went to Preve Wellness and Spa which is at the Renaissance uh, for a massage deal there this weekend, this this weekend. So I'll talk about those. So, but those are the things that we're talking about. Today. I should have come and got a massage too. Maybe that would help loosen mucus in my chest. I bet massages are good when you're sick. I think massages are good all the time, as long as you're not contagious. Yeah, I guess. So you don't infect the masseu- masseuse, masseur. Masseur. So tell me about the, we, I don't think this is order necessarily of what you did things, but tell me about the Kennedy Space Center because when I went to the Kennedy Space Center with my parents probably 10 years ago, I was not impressed. So we went, me, my mom, Todd, and my mom really, really wanted to record with us about this because my mom liked it too and I'm surprised she did, but she, we just didn't have the time. Things didn't work out during her visit time-wise. Um, but we had a great time. It's like, um, an amusement park. Like when you get the map and you pull it out and you're like, oh my God, there's so much stuff to do. And they have like sections. They have, uh, 3d movies. They have IMAX movies. They have a bus tour where you get on the bus and it takes mm-hmm. you like a couple miles out. Cause there's pieces of the property that you can't get to with car with your personal car. And those are like the launch pads where they shoot the, they used to shoot off the rockets from. And, um, I got to talk to a real astronaut who went into space. So I saw that picture of you and the astronaut. So they just have like, they pay an astronaut to stand there and take pictures with you. Well, so they had on the schedule, it's, uh, there's a big times guide too. That's a lot of actually your visit is trying to time everything out because, it's kind of like where you, there's only certain things, certain hours, like presentations and stuff. So you have to kind mm-hmm. of like work your way around that. It's definitely like I upgraded my ticket so I can go back because there's so much stuff that I even didn't oh, get wow. to do. You want to go back? I want to go back. It was fun. Okay. We really had a good time. How much is a ticket? Uh, oof, I can't remember. I feel like it was like 65 or 75. 65? Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty expensive. Wow. But um, it was worth it, I thought. Okay. I just remember, I do remember going on the bus. But I don't really, and I remember We didn't even get to see everything because, you know, the government was shut down at that time. So there were like some things they didn't let us see still. Some things that were closed. Hmm. But um, they had, that day they had two presentations and each, it was about an hour long and she stood on a stage and she had like a PowerPoint presentation she was going through. And this is the astronaut? Yeah. And we were like in a little auditorium. It wasn't even that many people. Maybe like 40 people showed up. And she was kind of, she she went about the speech as if we were going into space. Oh, okay. what, what, what would be your date like? Like, okay, you would suit up. You would get, they would load you into the cockpit they would close the door you put on your mask so she kind of talked talked you through the whole thing i mean there's and then all all the while she was going through pictures on a little powerpoint and she was like pointing things out with a laser pointer and stuff but it was so interesting because she um there's just stuff i didn't know like did you know there's an international space center 
station yeah in the space yeah yes i didn't know and there's people there all the time yes i didn't know that oh i thought we just randomly shot people into space and they took pictures and then came home like i didn't i you know like when you when you hear about these launches and you see things like uh especially here in florida because we get all like excited and we like stand outside to To watch watch the rocket launch because we can even see here from orlando you can see it so it's kind of like a thing where we pay attention to it but um since they ended the space program i didn't think they were putting anyone into space anymore Mm -hmm. but because that's kind of like a an ongoing project they are still putting people up there they're always looking down and it it just uh, blew my mind. I didn't know that. Well, I'm glad you learned something new. I really, really liked it a lot. So if you, it's it was only an hour drive from here, from Orlando. It's near Cocoa Beach. The only th- the only complaint was there were like millions of kids there on field trips. So so maybe it's better to go on a weekend. Uh yeah, I guess, but maybe or not even on the weekend trip, it would be busy. Not in field trip season. Yeah. Which I guess that would be summer, which would be busy. But it was so. really cool. I, I really liked it a lot. And my mom liked it, too. She was like, you need to put this on your podcast because it is worthwhile. She said we need to do a whole episode about it. A whole episode. I said, well, hold up, Sue Ellen. <laughs> well, I, I would definitely give it a chance again. But I don't remember it being very exciting when I was there. I liked my parents. it. But I would give it a shot again because I think that in the last 10 years, they really have made an effort to make improvements on it. And, and they claim that... No tax dollars are spent on it. It's all funded it's by all funded by like the tickets. tickets and stuff, which may be why it's so expensive. But I don't even see how that could be possible. It's it's pretty nice. It's not janky at all. It's well, pretty that's legit. Good to hear. That's good so, to hear. That's definitely uh, worth a day trip from Orlando. So for your actual birthday on the night of the air, your actual birthday, we went to Whirly Dome. Which, uh, for those of you who don't know or are not fami- familiar, Whir- Whirly Dome this is... This is a hidden gem, I think. Uh, ...on International Drive. And basically the concept is is that you get into bumper cars and then you play a basketball-style game with a wiffle ball and these things, these kind of like cloth Scooper things, scoopers things. Scoopers that you pick up the wiffle ball with and you throw it to the uh, the goal or the basket. And you can have up to 10 people. So and then it's two colors, red and yellow. So you get on teams. So up to five people on each team, five and five. And it's 10 minutes per game. (laughs) And I don't know. We kind of we didn't score any freaking points. It's still fun, though. But it was still fun. We really had a hard time scoring points because the basket, it's like a basketball. So you have the backboard of the hoop and then like where the hoop would be, there's a square. Um with tape and you have to get the ball right in the square so just because you hit the backboard doesn't is not going to allot you any points right so we hit the backboard quite a many times but never points. no points but it's a lot of fun i think it's a lot of fun and then they had a bar that had a nice happy hour their happy hour you could go there just for the happy hour yeah like it's cheap it's i'm like trying to think how can we describe on international where it is it's um kind of closer to mangoes. It's the area. janky part of I drive. That's why it's a hidden gem though, because it's it looks like if you saw it from the street, you'd be like, Oh, that's just a bunch of janky stuff. But it's an awesome place. It would be a great place to have like a group event, uh, a team building event for your company. Um, because they have two levels of this um game. So we can have two games going on at once. And then they have a lot of tables if you want to, like, have food, bring food. They have food there. I'm trying to look up the... Because if I recall properly, I took a picture of what the happy hour was. Because, honestly, if you're in the area, whether you're traveling for business or you're just here and you are not too far away from uh, there, it's the happy hour is pretty good. But... I thought I took a picture. I took a picture. You did? Okay. Because I remember you saying, Take I think a I told of you. Board. Yeah, I probably told you. I think I was a little bit uh, tipsy at that point. And then I had one drink because everyone was pressuring me to drink. And I had one drink that gave me like the world's worst heartburn for the next 24 hours. It was pathetic. 
It really was pathetic. Okay, so they have um, daily from 5 to 7. And this is the weekends too, y'all. Well, it's daily from 5 to 7, and then Friday and Saturday it's 10 to midnight. Um, beer, $3 domestic drafts, and a dollar off craft beers. And then the cocktails, they have $3.50 Schmirnoff and Captain Morgan, $4 Fireballs and Jack Daniels, $6 for Tito and Crown. I mean, I think that's really good. In Orlando, that's a damn deal. Yeah. So we went and had some drinks and everyone was lit, including my mother. Oh, your mother was a little lit. And then we got in the bumper cars and It was fun. It's fun. I had done it, was it fun. I had done it once before. Uh and it was fun then and I was sober then. I think it's fun when you have a like a full crowd of people you know. Yeah. Because sometimes if you just go like with a a couple of people you might have to play with people you don't know. So Stephanie had uh, called ahead of time and wanted to like reserve out um, a one of the areas where you play, and for an hour it was two hundred and what eighty or something. I can't remember. It was two hundred something, and I, I think said, it was two fifty. And I said, "Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We'll just go with a, a decent sized group." And That's we'll for ten people unlimited play. Which is fine. That's a good price if you can get 10 people to show up and be on time and stay for an hour. And play. Which I knew would not happen. And play effectively. Yeah. Like you have to be back to back to back. Because if you think about it, it's $8 per person per game, right? Yes. So that's not horrible. We played two games, which I could have played maybe one more, but that's about it. Like two or three games is enough. Uh, But we did fine. Even though it kind of got a little bit busy, especially in the bar area, nobody was waiting to play. They were all there for the freaking happy hour because the happy hour was awesome. So if you go have happy hour and then after you're done sipping on a few drinks, go right over to play, you should be all right. Especially if you have a group of eight or so you should be good you won't be playing with anybody else i i think it's fun and it i think it's a little bit of hidden gem i wish they would finish or s- somebody would make that part of iDrive a little bit nicer to match the rest of iDrive but and to me i don't i don't know the signage is not that great there i Mm-mm. i wouldn't have found that on my own had i been driving through the area someone else introduced it to me a-, a long time ago um but it just kind of looks like one of those janky shopping areas it doesn't look like there's anything really back there. But they have other stuff, too. They have, like... Um, I think they have food. They have food, but they also have, like, arcade games, too, if you want to do arcades. Um, and then another place that we went to, this is not in Orlando, but it's another quick day trip, is the Brevard Zoo. And I went to... I've been to the Brevard Zoo two other times with other people, but... Um, Recently, Crystal, our friend Crystal, caught up with Crystal. Um, She posted that she did the kayaking that they have through the zoo. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that because I never did the kayaking. And I really wanted to try that. And it was really neat. So you get like this little, um, you go two by two and they have like a leader and you just follow single file down mm-hmm. the trail and it takes you like through the exhibits like you are paddling past like the giraffes and you know the elephants right. and it takes you like through the zoo and it's so nice and it was cheap so we paid um 30 bucks and that was for the entrance the kayaking and then we got a giraffe and a bird feeding Wow. So it's 20 if you don't want to do, if you just want a mission, it's only 20. But 30 bucks for all that. Yeah. It was just a short ride. It was like an hour. It was a super cute zoo. It wasn't crowded. There weren't like a lot of people there. The animals were plentiful. We got to feed giraffes. They have like this platform that puts you like right at um, the face level of the giraffes. And I love giraffes. That's my favorite animal. And they have these big long tongues. And then there was these like, so there, that was another thing. A lot of the people there, they were all, not a lot, all the people that I met were volunteers. So they have people that stand like by the exhibit and they, most of them were like old retired people. Mm-hmm. And they were just so knowledgeable about, and you could tell that they had passion for, you know, the animals. They gave you animal facts? Yeah, they gave us animal facts. 
Okay. They were telling us about the babies and like some of the giraffes and like their personalities. So the animals breed at this zoo. It's a breeding zoo. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. She, yeah, she was telling us like which giraffe was the male and how many babies they had had over, you know, X amount of time Mm -hmm. and the habits of the giraffes and stuff like that. So, um, and then we went into the bird area and my stepdad, he just loves birds. Not really. He's petrified of them. Really? But we got these little cups of... Um, bird seed? Like feed? It's like a like a nectar. And you'll hold it. And then the birds just freaking like come and attack you. Like to get to the... Oh, like that, they get on your hand. That does sound a little they, terrifying. They sit on your head and your what? shoulders. And, no, thank you. Because they're all trying to get to that juice that you have in your hand. What? So it was fun. I think it would be really nice if you have kids and you so want to take like a day trip. The Brevard Zoo is different from like Animal Kingdom. It's more like hands on with the animals. Yeah, it's pretty hands on. I mean, they, it's just nice. They have like, it would be a nice place, you know, where you could take, you know, a packed lunch and just chill with your family. They have kids area for like a playground. Do you feel and like stuff. it's pretty big? Yeah, it's definitely a whole day's worth of stuff to look fun at. yeah a whole did day they have did you eat there what did you eat there well, i don't think we ate there um it was only I last think, month i think you because we had breakfast we had a late breakfast okay. we had a big breakfast before we left we had snacks and then uh we ate somewhere else in the evening because i don't i don't wasn't in the mood for that kind of park food hey i think they had like hot dogs and how did you get there sandwiches. 528 because Brevard is more towards the east coast, right? Like towards the Atlantic, like I don't towards Coco. I'm bad. I just put it in my GPS and took the road. Oh. I didn't even pay attention, to be quite honest. You know, I'm not a fan of long drives, but it was fun. I would definitely. I would like that to. That was go my third visit there, and I would go back for sure. I like to go feed the, the kayaking thing sometime. was so fun, and I would definitely do that again. I've never kayaked. You should. I we should go like to the Waka- we should go to Wakaiva and kayak sometime. I feel like I would like tip the thing over. And no, it's so relaxing. You won't, you don't tip it over. And my mom, she um. So before you start the kayaking, they line you up and they give you instructions on how to kayak because, okay. So for those of you who haven't like kayaking and canoeing are two different things. Mm-hmm. When you're in a kayak, you have one long paddle that has a paddle on both sides. Right. And when you're in a canoe, you only paddle on one side. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're can, when you're kayaking with two people, the person in the front paddles and the person in the back steers. So the person in the back, they just literally like just dip the paddle mm-hmm. in on either side to steer, steer the boat. Well, my mom thought what she heard was that the person that sits in the front doesn't do anything. Okay. So... Todd did all the paddling and all the steering in the back in the back. <laughs> Why didn't he just correct her? I don't know. Probably he just was trying to be nice. What a gentleman. But I think probably my mom did hear right. She just didn't want to paddle. <laughs> so were you by yourself then? <laughs> yeah, of course. My life story. I was in my own boat oh. uh, all by myself. But you know what? I steered that shit and I paddled that shit all by myself the whole time. Just like I do in life. <laughs> and i had and i steered my boat so good but no it's so it's so relaxing we we really should go to wakaiva i went a long time ago um with some friends from disney and we kayaked like eight miles on this eight miles but at wakaiva you go on a trail where it's like you go with the water uh-huh. so like it's it doesn't sound like that crazy because you're going with the current and there's spots so where you, you can get, get out and you can sit for a minute. You can stand up because how, it's like. How do you get back to your car? Uh, a bus picks you up and they load the canoe that or they load your kayak that you rented uh-huh. and they take you back to the parking lot. Got it. But it's just relaxing, like especially Wakaiva because the water is so blue and you see like wildlife. What kind of wildlife? Uh, we saw a bear. Okay. And alligators and birds. Snakes. Uh, yeah, snakes. Yeah, oh. all that stuff. Oh. I don't know about that. Just to try. 
Mm. No. Well, I mean, eight miles is a commitment. <laughs> it only took probably about two or three hours. Yeah, I try it for sure. But Brevard County Zoo, it, it does sound maybe that probably will be the best good. place to uh, get you. To I feel like I'd be distracted though, wanting try. to like take pictures. And that was uh, that's one thing that I do have to say that being in my own boat was hard because. I was trying to take pictures and video, but I couldn't because you can't um, you can't really let go of your steering too too much, or you start going in the wrong direction. Like you have to keep a handle on the boat if you want to keep going in the right direction, especially like when you're trying to stay in line with everybody. And right, they had this like safety um, thing on the edge, so wherever the animals were. On mm-hmm. the edge of that land, they had a safety feature where if your boat, your boat had a hook on the front, and if you got too close to that line, okay, it would hook your boat would hook to it, and then you couldn't move until the tour guide came and unhooked you. So I did not want to hit that hook. So I was like trying girl. to take pictures, trying to steer my boat, trying to enjoy it. So having a, it would be cool if you had like um, what do you call those like camera things that a people, GoPro? Yeah, a GoPro would be cool for that. Okay. Definitely. Cool. So yeah, sometime I want to go to Brevard. I know you've been several times, but I haven't. Because it would be fun, I think. It would be fun to feed. Like, There's the another giraffes. zoo that I want to visit. It's kind of like near Sanford. It's out by Red Bug Lake. Hmm. I see it a lot sometimes when I'm going out there for work. So what? I don't know what it's called, though. What I feel like it might be the Central Florida Zoo. What gets um, you interested about that? Just I want to go. Oh, okay. Just to go. Because I always see it. And I want to see what their animals like are there. Man, what their animals there are like yeah i haven't been to uh a zoo in central florida other than animal kingdom which is not a zoo it's, which is not a zoo but it's a zoo it's a zoo it's a zoo they just had a baby there did you hear about this uh-uh. uh a giraffe had a baby on stage and they had to close the ride down oh wow because they i guess they didn't know like they didn't know that it was I guess you can never know with animals. Yeah, but why do they need to close it down? Because the, it's I don't know, nature. the giraffe had the baby on stage and they generally, with it, what they would do was remove the animal. Like uh-huh. when they think, they would quarantine the animal. Uh, when they think the animal is going to birth within a week or two, they take it and put it in a separate pen away from all the other animals, away from the male. It's just the mother and then they keep them separate for a little while. Got it. So I so think they that's expecting it. To be yeah, so they weren't expecting early. it to happen. And then I guess guests saw it, too. How that's cool would awesome. that be? That's cool. I wonder if there's video on the YouTube. Oh, we should look on the interwebs on the YouTubes. Well, it sounds like you had a good birthday month. I had a great birthday month. Christy was here. My mom was here. Todd was here. We did all kinds of funsies. Yeah. Other than being sick AF for like two months now you've been sick since christmas day yeah well christmas day is when you started feeling bad and it's just been up and down ever since so and i haven't been sick in a long time probably i think it really was since the summer sometime i did get a little bit this is something but i hadn't been sick since then i think the weather here is a big factor too we've been having like cold and hot and cold and hot and rain and we haven't we normally don't get so much precipitation during the winter, no. but this winter we've had so much rain and like all day, like today, Sunday, we're recording Sunday the 10th and for most of the morning, it's just been a continuous rain. And then there was a day we were supposed to go to the animal kingdom and it just was cold. It, that it was day. cold, windy and rainy. I know I was bummed we didn't go that day, but I'm glad that we didn't because that would I was like kind of starting to feel better, which is why I wanted to go out. But then I was like, probably being wet and cold all day wouldn't have been helpful. Yeah, it wouldn't have been great. But so, what are what are the, some of the things you did while I was with my family? So I have been since the beginning of the year. I've been to Susuru. If that, ho- I hope that's the pronunciation. I've been to Susuru twice. Uh, once with a boyfriend, and then once when my sister and uh tim her husband came and this is a japanese retro restaurant and it's a lot of fun it's over on palm parkway right near where player one bar is which i still haven't been to which i really want to go to player one uh but susuru uh the grand opening was on january the third 
So how's the interior there? Because everything in that plaza is kind of janky. It is like... I couldn't imagine a, like a really nice restaurant over it's there. It's really nice. It's like you are... We, I think you could be able to eat there because they have some like chicken skewers. So I think I, we could go there with you. <laughs> and you'd find something that you like. Um, but it is... The interior is like... It's retro Japanese with like fun Japanese things like toys hanging up and they just you can tell they didn't spend a lot a lot of money but they made the right decisions yeah. with what they were doing to d- decorate it. Like some of the seats are like you know the plastic beer um they're like really hard plastic things that maybe like drinks come in and you know you, they turn them upside down put a cushion on top and like that's the like barrels the not barrels it's like a plastic crate and they kind of have like holes in it and you'll just you'd have to look at the pictures uh online or when we go you have to see but it's just really creative it looks it doesn't look cheap but you can tell they didn't have to spend yeah a lot of money on it it was it's really nice it feels like you're somewhere in new york or somewhere in you know downtown or winter garden or excuse me winter park it feels nice it doesn't feel like is it um quick service sit down sit down so they have bar and then they have sit down um and their menu is basically kind of like a japanese street food so they have like um they have tacos japanese yeah like street tacos no that's mexico no <laughs> i don't know you oh know like a Lord. fancy taco like no this is like japanese street food so like uh, meat on a stick maybe what i'm thinking of is you ever see that really white uh oh the um like um, king bow wow bow wow like that where it's that like a is, little i don't know if that's japanese but i okay okay I that's give what you, i'm thinking i give you credit there <laughs> Uh, but no, they don't have they don't have those. They do have really good fries that have this like, um, like spicy mayo on on them with seaweed on top. Now you wouldn't like that, but you'd like the fries because their fries are good. Maybe I could try the seaweed. You know, seaweed is like barely nothing, and it's good for you. You know what I mean? Like it's like paper thin. I guess I could give it a try if we put it on top of French fries. Yeah, the French fries are really good. Uh, we had the tofu. I've had now, uh, they had um, chicken skin on a stick. Skin? Yeah, it was good. Uh, What's the thing that you had with the green powder on the top? That is the matcha tiramisu, which is beautiful and it's very good. I highly recommend it. It's like, it's a place that you would not think that would come to the attractions area. Yeah, that's why I I need to go because I don't really understand it. You are going to walk in and be like, this is in like this plaza. It seems so highly unlikely to place that nice would be in that plaza. Right. So it's in the plaza where player one is. There's a Hooters in there and there's a uh, a Kobe's there. A CC's. Uh, there's Cafe. Um, sea Dog Eats. Sea Do- no, 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 no. That's in. Isn't that in. Um, is Sea Dog's in there? Yeah, mm-hmm. it is in it's there. It's back in the kind of yeah. nook. It's w- the I think we've talked about this Brazilian cafe before. Uh, Brazil one five five yeah. is in there. Brazil one five five needs to take note from Susuru because Susuru, I'm saying it right, yeah, Susuru, uh, they did not buy a neon sign. You know how you buy the big neon yeah. signs? They did not. They did a. They got permission to do a mural on the outside of the building and then they did like a wood sign with the susuru letters and to light it up they got like rope lights to light it up Hmm. so it looks it looks legit but it's not the neon because those not the neon but you know those yeah those typical those are expensive and when i talked to cafe 155 they're like oh we don't have a sign yet and basically, it was due to expense. But you can't find Cafe 155 because yeah, th- there's no signage. So they're never going to uh, get to where they need to. Because I drove around that parking lot like Looking twice just to find Cafe 155. So they need And to that, s- honestly, that place doesn't get much traffic to begin with. That right. So you need all the signage you can get. And if you don't have signage, you're not going to take ta- traffic away from Hooters or Kobe's. Yeah. You know, if there's a way to Kobe's, somebody might go somewhere else. Exactly. Because those places, the places that are big places back there, they do get busy. 
-hmm. Like I've been back there in the evening and not been able to find parking because the bigger places like Hooters, Sea Dog, they all are pretty bu- and Kobe's pretty busy. Both places or both times I went to Susuru, it was busy. Once was on a weekend, once was on a weekend. I wonder weeknight. how people are hearing about it. Like how did you hear about it? Uh social media, Instagram. Hmm. It's good. And it's it was it was even busy on a Thursday night. We didn't have to wait, but there were, every table was full. Hmm. And people were continuously coming in. The first time we sat at the bar because it would have been a wait to get a table. Highly recommend 100%. Uh, both times were delicious. So finally, let's talk about Preve Wellness and Spa at the Renaissance, uh, which is Renaissance SeaWorld right by SeaWorld. Oh, I didn't know that's where you were. I mean, you told me, but I just didn't put two and two together. Yeah, so it was a $95 travel zoo. I called up and uh they you said all, hey girl hey i what's popping today I, I booked it they i asked do i need to buy the travel zoo coupon before i finish booking this and they're like no we can just book you now which i'm sure i don't think travel zoo would like that so much because they want to take account for they, they probably wanna, get a cut of the money well travel zoo gets a little bit of the money yeah so sorry travel zoo they're but. not going to sponsor us if you stop buying the coupons <laughs> Uh, I will always buy and look at travel zoo coupons. Anyway, so they booked over the phone uh, and honored the travel zoo rate. And I showed up on a Saturday morning. I got a 10 a.m. That was the only uh, time appointment they had. And it was great. It was. It's a nice little spa. And Stephanie's not a fan of the little spas. She wants a big grandiose. So, man, you just ruined me with that with that spa that we went to in Vegas. Freaking ruined my. We ass. went to Canyon Ranch, which I'm sure we've talked about Canyon Ranch in a previous episode. Oh, this like, spa was to die for. Canyon Ranch at the Palazzo and the Venetian in Vegas. Stephanie uh, and I went there. I've been there a second time after Steph. Uh, and it it's is like a spot. It's like a playground. It's like endless rooms of like happiness. Every every time we turn a corner, there's another bed or another like ch- beautiful chair to sit in or a salt room or a spa, hot so spa, wet a Canyon spa. Ranch in Vegas. And it's huge. We lost each other in the spa. That's how big it is. In Canyon Ranch in Vegas, each of the men's and women's, each side has uh, its own steam room, its own Arctic room, its own jacuzzi, its own warm beds to lay in, you know, the ones that get warm. The heated tile loungers. Loungers. Um, A dry sauna. And then it's another room next to the dry sauna that's like, like... aromatic yeah. and i forget what it's called and then uh it also each of the locker rooms have two experience showers yeah right am right. i right because the sides mirror each other right. basically so that's just the men's and women's and the hot tub yeah and the jacuzzi hot tub so then when you go into the common area which is, w- the this co-ed, is what i like because you know, when we go to spas, we don't get to spend that much time together because usually there's only one small room right. for co- f- to be together. So the co-ed space at Canyon Ranch is huge. It's like a um, convention room turned into co-ed lounge because it's so huge. And there's probably like eight different like sitting nooks yeah. like where people can just sit in little nooks. Um, there's a water the feature, room. I think. Uh, and then off of that co-ed, there's a salt room and then there's a aqua room where you sit in a lounger and you look up at and like, like water, water. Uh, moving around. And, it's and then like, remember that egg chair thing that we did? But when I was there in July, uh, they were charging for it. Oh yeah, we got to try it. They were saying like, oh, we have this new service that we're going to let like, you try for free. It's a sens- I wouldn't pay for it. but It's a sensory deprivation not the sensory deprivation that puts you in the water because there's sensory deprivation that you float in the water yeah, not a float tank. but this one is just you sit in a lounger 
a like a futuristic thing comes over you or like a dome comes over you you listen to an audio track so it's not that sensory deprivation because you're listening to audio you can do guided meditation yeah. or non-guided but it's kind of like a meditation chamber. and then the lights like go blue or red or orange whatever you choose there's different programs like energizing right. or relaxation and i blah, think blah, they blah. charge now at canyon ranch they charge 25 dollars per person man that's kind of pricey i wouldn't do it again i would I didn't not care do it for again. it it wasn't that great i th- I was expecting more it pulled me to sleep but the way they talked about it yeah. before we got into it was like oh it's so great and then i was like that's it i mean i could close my eyes yeah. and listen to spotify exactly the same way in one of these other chairs in my bedroom at yeah. home um so after that experience i just feel like every spa is a piece of shit I, I I have to, I don't look at it quite like that. Like I know <laughs> where to go to get a massive spa experience and that's Vegas. There's no place like Vegas in terms of spas that I have been to yeah. or that have the spas so readily available and that are massive and like you can spend literally the whole day there because there's so much to do or not to do, you know? Yes. Uh, there's nothing like Vegas spas that I have found mm. that I have come to find. Uh, Canyon Ranch, Qua, uh, Mandalay Bay has a good spa as well. Anyway, but the smaller spas can be good too because they have the discounted rates. If you go to Canyon Ranch and try to get a massage there, it's gonna be like three hundred bucks. Yeah. So I think that what Cheryl and I talked about in the spa episode last year is that you can go, you can get a discounted massage. Of course, it's not as discounted or as cost effective as an MC. Yeah. But you're still, you're coming out of the massage and you don't have to walk straight into your car. I agree. Get your clothes back on and walk into the car. So it's still an experience. It's, It's the best of both worlds. Right. It's still an experience, but you don't have to end that experience so rapidly because listen at this uh purvey wellness and spa it wasn't that big so i walked in there's an i took pictures and i'll have to post how was your massage it was nice did they touch your butt Uh, he did not touch my butt damn it was okay i told him that uh the focus kind of on my neck and actually my neck feels really good today i i'm sore in a spot or two uh because he really did get in there deep but i do overall feel like that my neck is better Oh, good. (laughs) I told him yesterday, we better drink a lot of water because after that massage that Christy and I got at the the Blue Blue Harmony, Blue Harmony, the Blue Harmony. Oh, Lord. I was nearly paralyzed the next day because I I know it was probably because I didn't drink any water. Right. Oh, my God. I was in so much pain the next day. So I felt like the Preve was recently remodeled. I think they changed their name or management uh, within the last year or so. And everything was crisp and clean um they were using gray towels though um no you need to use white white is a standard white is standard you need to be using white towels i'm sorry about that and they were they were too big were they a slate gray or were they like light gray they were a slate gray Mm. yeah it wasn't a light gray it was a slate gray I would definitely recommend, and I'm sure they're doing that just to, no, you need to go to white, but their robe is the best spa robe I've ever had. Why? Because it was like on the inside, it was really soft and like, it was just cozy. I feel like every time I get a spa robe, it's kind of like, it wasn't like like that. starchy and like not no, soft. No, it was very soft. It was, and it was oversized. Uh, because some of these robes for me, you know, you don't want your bits and pieces hanging out the front. No. And, but I want to feel comfortable, you know, and cozy. In yeah, the exactly. Robe. So this was the best, uh, spa robe I've ever had. They had two showers, uh, and a steam room. Um, and that, that was it for the amenities in the locker room. But the steam room was really good, and they had the eucalyptus spray. In the room. <gasps> oh, I love the eucalyptus spray. And that was I, really I got nice. on that hard when, we, when I came home from Vegas. I was like, I need this in my bathroom every day. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was good. The massage was good. I think I spent maybe an hour and a half or two hours there. That's good. No pool? 
Uh, I did have access to the pool. I decided not to go out to the pool. It was a little windy and it was starting to get overcast. So I didn't do the pool. Oh, yeah. It was a little crappy yesterday. But uh, what I've seen of the pool, it looks really nice. It's not an adult pool, but it's a pool. So you can go there. Uh, a glass of, um, I think it was rosé, uh, was provide was included in the travel nice. zoo. And oh, and this one for ninety five included the stones as well. Oh, I love the stones. So that feels so good. I was, I was happy with it, and uh, I think it's a good deal. So head over to Travel Zoo and grab that deal. And so that's the reason why uh, we like the resort deals is really so, so you don't have to jump back in your car immediately after yeah. your massage. You get to chill. And, uh, and these are the best prices you're going to get on a spa massage. Right. So. But it's a nice little uh, resort spa and um, it was clean and the staff was friendly. Joshua, the manager, was friendly and uh, Sean uh, was good as well my masseuse so everything was great would have been better if he would have touched your butt no <laughs> <laughs> i keep thinking about that woman that touched my butt when we were in vegas i was like damn i just keep she it, going all the way up i keep thinking of finding nemo when they say touch the butt touch the butt touch the butt <laughs> no he he was good and uh <laughs> He was, I, I feel like this time with the stones, cause I got stones at blue harmony and he did the stones better. I I've noticed that in my m- experience with massages, some people know how to work the stones better. You have to place them in certain places in your hand while you're massaging mm-hmm. or you, sometimes you can even feel them. You and know? he kept refreshing the stones. Yeah. I think more than blue harmony did. They need to be refreshed because you know, after a minute or so, the he did three refreshes. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he did three refreshes. Oh good. And then he got right in on my neck. Right in there. Really good. Right in the With, crack. Yeah. Crack. Yeah, the crack, the crevice, the crank of your neck. So once again, we'll keep bringing you spa updates. Updates Because hello, we live in Orlando. Y'all, if y'all haven't heard me rant about this, not everyone has resort spas like we do. No. So y'all need to take advantage because they validate parking and they uh, validate the valet too. We should move to Vegas and start a podcast where all we do is go to a new spa every day. We literally in Vegas you could cuz yeah. there's so many spas in Vegas. That'd be awesome. Then we could be like that lady. What's the lady we used to watch? Uh, Samantha, Samantha Brown. Samantha Brown. We were really on the DL want to be just like Samantha Brown. Oh, where no. we just travel and stay in nice hotels and report back. So anyway, that's this episode. We hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit. And we will be back to you next week. Um, Once again, I'm Brian. I'm Stephanie. And that's Stephanie. And we'll see you guys next time. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram. You know what I didn't do at the beginning is I didn't tell them to follow us on Instagram and all the things. It's all right. Nobody listens anyway. (laughs) When we say go follow us. Follow us on Instagram at Orlando Out of Context and visit us at OrlandoOutOfContext.com. And make sure to listen and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Bye. Bye. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Your voice is warmed up. It's warmed up. That hot toddy got it all warmed up.